So yeah, I know, calling something the world's best logic puzzle is obnoxious. It's a sort of clickbaity nonsense that makes people want to stop watching videos like this. However, I've heard a lot of logic puzzles in my day, and I can say unequivocally that this is my single favorite. It's the problem of the blue-eyed robots, and I certainly did not make it up. You can find various versions of it all over the internet, including one on the blog of arguably the most brilliant person on Earth, mathematician Terence Tao. It's even popular enough to get a shout-out in an XKCD comic. Without further ado... <laughs> It all starts out with me minding my own business, sailing out in the ocean. Where? Don't worry about it. What's important is that I stumbled across a desert island. And no, that's not a different boat. Quit asking so many questions. Anyways, this desert island, it wasn't just your average desert island. This desert island was inhabited by robots. So I pull up to the island, and for some reason the first thing I think to say is, wow, some of y'all got red eyes and some of you got blue eyes. That's weird. And immediately they all get super serious. And they're like, shut up, foreigner. You can't talk about our eyes. What? Why? Who cares? Well, they go on to tell me that they've been living on this island for thousands of years. And the reason they're here is because they were programmed with one fatal flaw. If a robot finds out whether he has red or blue eyes, he'll explode that night at sunset. So they all move to this island where it's strictly forbidden to discuss anyone's eye color, and there's no reflective surfaces or any other way in which a robot might figure out whether he has red or blue eyes. And I'm like, all right, well, that's weird. See you later. Jump back on my boat and sail myself back home. And when I finally get home, I'm eager to tell my dog Hector all about it. And what he tells me shocks me. He claimed that all those robots were going to explode, and it was my fault. Hector, you're crazy, I said. These robots got eyes. They can all see the eye color of all the other robots. The only eye color they don't know is their own. There were like 40 with red eyes and 60 with blue eyes. And all I said was some of you got red eyes and some of you have blue eyes. How could that possibly matter? They already knew that some had red eyes and some had blue eyes. They can see each other's eyes. Hector just shook his head and he was like, man, you stupid human, you just don't get it. Those robots are going to explode and it's your fault. So now I come to you with the question. And let's make it multiple choice. One of three things is going to happen. Either I didn't tell the robots anything they didn't already know. They can already see that some of them have red eyes and some have blue eyes. Nothing's going to happen. Everything will go on status quo. That's option one. Option two. Nah, must have been a dream or something. These robots couldn't possibly exist. Even without your comment, they'd be able to deduce their own eye color and would have exploded long ago. And then option three. They're all going to explode but it's not gonna happen at night. We'll have to wait 40 nights for the explosions to start. And on that night, exactly 40 of them will explode. And then on the 41st night, the remaining 60 will explode, ending the long, peaceful existence of these robots. Oddly specific, right? If you're a poker player, you might just guess that the third option must be the right option, even if you don't quite see how it's gonna happen. Or maybe I'm just messing with you, giving you something super specific that isn't gonna happen. The choice is yours. To help you decide, let me give you a little bit more information to try to make this as concrete as possible. On this island, there are 40 robots with red eyes and there are 60 robots with blue eyes. All of these robots are perfectly logical and they all know that they're all perfectly logical. And they all know that they all know that they're all perfectly logical. And so on. The explosions take place the instant the sun sets and the robots who explode are the ones who were able to deduce logically what their own eye color must be since the prior night sunset. There's no weird tricks or unsatisfying resolution to this. This will be based purely on logic. So which option do you choose? <laughs> to figure it out, we'll have to consider a different desert island. And I know that seems weird, but stick with me. On this new island, we have the exact same robots, and I make the exact same comment. The only difference is, instead of there being 40 robots with red eyes and 60 with blue eyes, there's only one robot with red eyes and 99 with blue eyes. So prior to me making my comment, any individual blue robot sees one robot with red eyes and 98 others with blue eyes. So from their perspective, there's either one red-eyed robot on this island or two red-eyed robots on this island. The one they see and themselves who they're unsure of. The red-eyed robot, however, only sees 99 other blue-eyed robots. So from their perspective, either everybody on the island has blue eyes or there's 99 robots with blue eyes and one themselves with red eyes. Then in comes Brian, speaking foolishly as I'm known to do, telling these robots that there's some with red eyes and some with blue eyes, eliminating the possibility that there's zero red-eyed robots and a hundred blue-eyed robots. This red-eyed robot now knows with certainty that there's only one red-eyed robot on the island and 99 blue-eyed robots. And because he can see 99 other blue-eyed robots, he knows with certainty that he must be the red-eyed robot. That's bad news for him. Since he knows his eye color, that night when the sun sets, BOOM! And the carnage doesn't stop there. Think about the perspective of one of the blue-eyed robots. He just watched a red-eyed robot explode. 
But if he himself had red eyes, he would have been in the same situation as that red-eyed robot who exploded. So he would have had to explode. He didn't explode, he must not have red eyes. Therefore, he has blue eyes. And by the exact same logic, all of the other blue-eyed robots know that they must have blue eyes. Bad news for them, the very next night when the sun sets. Wait for it, wait for it, BAM! And you're like, yeah, cool story, only one problem. The original question wasn't about this other island with one red-eyed robot. On the original island, we had 40 red-eyed robots. I know, I know, but to understand that case with 40 red-eyed robots, you have to be really solid on this case with one red-eyed robot. So can we all agree that if there were only one red-eyed robot, which I recognize there's not on our original island, but if there were, and I came in making my statement, that red-eyed robot would explode on the first night, and on the second night, all the blue-eyed robots would explode. Yeah? Good? Okay, follow me to one more other island. This island may look a lot like the island we just came from, but there's one key difference. This island has two red-eyed robots and 98 blue-eyed robots. Any given blue-eyed robot sees 97 other blue-eyed robots and two red-eyed robots and is unsure of their own eye color. So from their perspective, there's either two red-eyed robots on the island or three red-eyed robots on the island. Any given red-eyed robot sees 98 blue-eyed robots and one other red-eyed robot and is unsure of their own eye color. So from their perspective, there's either one red-eyed robot on the island or two red-eyed robots on the island. And then along comes Brian making his statement. And you know what happens that night when the sun sets? Absolutely nothing happens. The robots enjoy a beautiful sunset. My statement doesn't allow any of them to deduce their eye color. Uh, really? That's not what I was expecting. Yeah, look at the different options. Both the red and blue-eyed robots know that there's exactly two different possibilities for the number of red-eyed robots on the island, and in each case, both of those options are greater than zero. Me telling them that there's some red-eyed robots and some blue-eyed robots doesn't allow anybody to deduce their eye color, so nobody explodes. They live their happy little robot lives. The next day, they all gather on the beach to watch another beautiful sunset. It's majestic, spellbinding. But then out of nowhere, BAM! Whoa, wait, what just happened? Remember, either of our two red-eyed robots knew that there was either one or two red-eyed robots on the island. But they also knew that if they were on an island with only one red-eyed robot, that red-eyed robot would explode at the first sunset. So when that didn't happen, they each immediately knew that there were two red-eyed robots on the island. They look around, only see one other red-eyed robot on the island, know that they must be the second red-eyed robot. They know their eye color, they explode. You starting to see where this is going? We already knew that if we were on an island with just one red-eyed robot, my comment would cause that robot to explode at the very first sunset. We now know that if we're on an island with two red-eyed robots, my comment will cause them to explode on the second sunset. What if our island had three red-eyed robots? Each robot would be able to narrow it down to two possibilities for the number of red and blue-eyed robots that live on that island. But they wouldn't know which of the two was correct, so they wouldn't know their eye color, so everything's fine. Then I come along and make my comment, no one explodes on the first night, no one explodes on the second night, but then, because the red-eyed robots know that if there were two red-eyed robots, they would explode on the second night, the fact that they didn't explode tells them that there couldn't possibly be two red-eyed robots on the island, so there must be three red-eyed robots on the island. They only see two, they know they're the third, they explode on the third night. So earlier, we used our knowledge of what would happen on an island with only one red-eyed robot to predict what will happen on an island with two red-eyed robots. And then just now, we use that knowledge of what would happen on an island with two red-eyed robots to predict what would happen on an island with three red-eyed robots. And now that we have that knowledge, we can use it to predict what would happen on an island with four red-eyed robots. Knowledge which we'll then use to predict what will happen on an island with five red-eyed robots, and so on and so on, until we get to an island with 40 red-eyed robots. On this island, the robots look around, and based on what they see, they deduce that there's only two different possibilities for the number of red and blue-eyed robots on the island. Nothing happens for 39 straight sunsets. But when no one explodes on that 39th night, the red-eyed robots know that there couldn't possibly be 39 red-eyed robots, and therefore there must be 40 red-eyed robots. They only see 39, they know they're the 40th, and on that 40th night at sunset, <laughs> the fate of the blue-eyed robots isn't much better as they quickly realize that because they did not explode on the 40th night, they must not have the same eye color as all those robots who did explode, so their eyes must be blue, a realization which destines them to explode the very next night. So of our original three choices, I guess C was the correct answer. 
I guess. I mean, if you're anything like me, the first time you hear this argument, it doesn't leave you entirely convinced. Didn't the robots already know that some of them had red eyes and some of them had blue eyes? How would they have lived thousands of years without exploding? What new information did you give these robots in order to change their course of history? The answer is a topic in logic called common knowledge, and it's something that I rarely see discussed when people try to answer this question. To explain it, let's take a quick trip back to that island that had two red-eyed robots. To make things a little bit more personable, let's name our red-eyed robots, Rufus and Ralphie. The key fact is, before I come and ruin things, Rufus knows that there's red-eyed robots, Ralphie knows that there's red-eyed robots, but Rufus doesn't know that Ralphie knows that there's red-eyed robots. And Ralphie doesn't know that Rufus knows that there's red-eyed robots. There isn't common knowledge, there's only first order knowledge of the existence of red and blue eyed robots. A similar, but slightly more mind boggling, argument holds if there's three red eyed robots. Let's add Reuben to the mix. Rufus knows that there's red eyed robots. Rufus knows that Ralphie knows that there's red eyed robots. Ralphie knows that Reuben knows that there's red eyed robots. Rufus knows that Reuben knows that there's red eyed robots. But Rufus doesn't know that Ralphie knows that Reuben knows that there's red eyed robots. There's only second order knowledge of the existence of red and blue eyed robots. But then two nights after I make my statement, that knowledge becomes common knowledge. And in the same way that we define the limitations of first order and second order knowledge, we could define the limits of third order knowledge or fourth order knowledge or fifth order knowledge and continue all the way until we got to the case of an island with 40 red eyed robots where the knowledge of the existence of red and blue eyed robots is only 39th order, which is what keeps these robots alive until 40 nights after I make my statement and it becomes common knowledge. If that makes any sense to you, great. But for me, I like to end these videos with a challenge question. This week I've got two. Suppose that on our desert island with 40 red eyed robots and 60 blue eyed robots, one of the robots is colorblind. My questions are, if I make the exact same comment as before, what is the fate of all 100 robots if A, all the robots know which one is colorblind, or B, the robots all know that there's a colorblind robot but don't know who it is? If you have any thoughts, questions, or solutions, throw them in the comments section. I'll take a look.